Hi there folks, this is Tech Coach Adams and today's video is going to be on OneNote Class Notebook and how teachers can navigate through the different sections and areas uh, to use it in their classroom. So to start with, this is what OneNote Class Notebook looks like in OneNote Online. Um, and in when you create a class notebook, there are some distinct sections that are created and OneNote again is a digital binder. There are sections which are like the dividers in the binder and within each section there are pages. So the sections are listed here on the far left column and then the pages within each of those sections are listed on the next column and then the content from each of those pages is on the bigger section over here. So that's what it structurally looks like. You'll see that the sections that uh, are created automatically when I make a class notebook are the collaboration space, the content library, the teacher only space was something that I enabled by clicking on manage notebooks and turning that on. Um, and then each of my students has their own personal space that I also have access to as well as the teacher because I'm the teacher. So let's talk about these different spaces. So the different spaces in a OneNote class notebook are first the collaboration space. And in the collaboration space, both students and teachers have full viewing and editing rights. So this can be very handy if you're doing some sort of class collaborative activity um, where something where you want all the input. So you could project this on the screen, have all the students creating uh, content on the same page at the same time um, and it can be very handy. There are obviously some downfalls to giving students full editing rights of a document. Uh, it can get confusing if too many students are all editing the exact same page at the exact same time. They can overwrite each other's uh, content. Uh, and then you can also have students who can either accidentally or purposefully uh, change, edit, or delete each other's um, work. So it has to be monitored and properly moderated, but uh, it can be useful for uh, any sort of group collaboration, um, whether it be small group or large group. Uh, really works well with small groups, actually, um, if you can create pages and tell, uh, called the first page group one, and then tell all the students in group one to put their information into that page and then do the same for group two, group three, or whatever your uh, class might warrant. And so that's the collaboration space. Up next, the next section is called the content library. The content library is a place uh, where teachers can add content that the students can view, but they can't edit or change it in any way. So this is a handy place for you to put information that you want the students to be able to refer to and look back on, but you don't want them to be able to alter it or change it in any way. So in the content library, if I click on it, there's already a section called using the content library that's been put in there on one page. But uh, this is a great place for you to put uh, like assignment outlines of or things that you want the students to be able to refer back to as far as information or checklists or rubrics. Um, so I could, if I wanted to, in the content library, I could click on section. And this is my gives me the ability to make a new section within the content library section. So I can call this section uh, landform project. And when I click OK, it will create that section in the content library. So it makes an untitled page automatically waiting for me to title the page. So I can put outline and now to save me having to type this whole outline here, um, I can uh, in print out uh, a page that I would have normally printed out on paper and handed to the students uh, to put into their regular binders. Now I can print digitally to OneNote and have the students store it in their digital binder. So if I go up to the insert tab at the top here, and I want to insert a file printout. It'll ask me to choose a file and I just need to navigate to where I've saved that file. Um, and there it is, Landform Project. And I click on 
open once it's loaded I can click insert and OneNote will make a printout of that document and put it onto the page that I asked it to insert it to. So it's not just a link to that document, it's actually a printout uh, of the actual document. So I've got the assignment outline, the learning goals here, the instructions on what I want them to do. And I've also included the success criteria or the rubric for how I will be assessing it. So that way the students always have this page they can refer back to, to check to make sure that they are doing things as they are supposed to. Um, and to go through this list of instructions as they go through it. And then when they're done, they can check their work against the rubric that I'll be using. And because it is in the content library, they can't actually change or edit any of this. Now, if the students wanted their own copy of this, they could copy this page by clicking on outline, click on copy, go into their personal space and they could paste it so they had their own copy of it and then they could actually check off or highlight parts of the rubric where they thought they felt, uh, where they, their work fell or they could cross off things in the instructions as they finish them off. Okay, so that's one way to use the content library. The content library is handy for any time you want to give information to the students um, and they can easily come back to and check on it. Okay, that's the content library. So up next is the teacher only section. Um, and this was the section that I enabled by going into the uh, manage notebooks uh, option and clicking on enable teacher only section group. This is a really handy group uh, section group that's created when you enable that that gives you essentially a private personal space just like the students have. So you as in the teacher get a space that only you are able to see. So when the students log in, they won't even see this uh, teacher only space listed. It's completely invisible to them. So it's really handy for um, collecting of assessments, um, keeping track of marks, anecdotal and observational records, things like that. Um, but I also really found it useful when um, I was planning um, an assignment that I was going to put into OneNote Class Notebook. Um, I could plan it out completely, start to finish, all steps in the teacher only group. And then when it was done, I could then use the Class Notebook add-on to distribute it to the students. So I'd like to show you how to do that, but in order to do that properly, I need to open this up in the desktop version of OneNote. OneNote Online does have a class notebook add-on, um, but the functionality is fairly limited compared to what the desktop version has. So I'm gonna switch over to the desktop version. And in order to do that, I just need to click on the open in OneNote button that is over here at, in the top header bar here. When I do that, it will ask me, are you sure? Yes, I want to open it in OneNote 2016. And then it will um, eventually open up uh, in OneNote 2016. If it's the first time you are opening it, it'll ask you for a security verification and possibly to sign in to OneNote. Um, go through all those steps if you have to, because you only have to do that really once. Once you've done that, it will be a pretty quick transition into it. So now I'm here in the desktop version of OneNote, which is very similar to the online version, um, except that I don't necessarily see all of the same information. I am in the teacher only section, but I don't see all the other sections on the left hand side. They are in order to get up a section, I need to click on this little green swoopy arrow here, and that will take me back up to the main section. So here is now my sections and section groups are across the top bar where in the online version they were on the left hand side. And if I want to see the pages, I go over here to the far right and those are the pages that are in. So back to my teacher only section. If I was continuing with this idea of a landform project that I wanted to give to the students and I wanted them to do it entirely in one note, a paperless project, research project. I could create this project in uh, my teacher only section group, meaning as I am making this and working on it, the students actually don't see it. So I've got my outline page that I had in the content library for, which is still handy for the students to have as part of this project. But as far as the steps to this project go, 
I want them first generating inquiring questions. So I've made a page called generating questions. And then I want them gathering research to answer those inquiring questions. So I've made a page called gathering research. Then I want them synthesizing that in research that they gathered and putting it into their own words and point form or jot notes. So I've got a page for that. And finally, a page for them to plan out the presentation of the research. Um, and in this case, it is uh, making a sway presentation so they can use this page to plan out the structure for their presentation. Now I want the students to have all of this and I want, for an important reason I'll show you in a minute, I want the names of all of these pages to be uniform across all of my students. So if I just told the students that I wanted them to create a section in their personal space called Landform Project and then add all of these pages, they might spell things wrong, they might forget a page, and then it causes problems. So instead, I'm going to go up here to my class notebook add-on, which is up in the top here. So I've got my main menu bar and oh, says there's a new version. I'm just going to tell me to remind me about that later. I'm sure the new version is similar. So now I've got these different um, options here. I can distribute a page and what that does is take any page that I'm currently looking at and gives it to all of the students in their personal spaces. I can distribute a new section to all of the students. I can distribute an entire content library from one notebook to another, review student work, create an assignment only works if you have your um, OneNote class notebook linked with a learning management system like Google Classroom. Um, so we won't worry about that right now. But then these are the buttons that were also in when I created it, the create a class notebook, add or remove students, add or remove teachers and manage notebooks. Um, and then like I said, manage classes is not something that you need to worry about uh, when you're first getting into this. If you want to connect it with a learning management system, you can there. Um, and then there's a section here for professional development where you can find teacher resources. And this button actually help and feedback is where you can send Microsoft, uh, you can find help and you can also give them feedback on, on functions you would like them to include in a later update of the class notebook add on. Um, and they actually do listen to that. They, they do get back to you on those things and, and they have adjusted these tools based on what teachers have requested. So if I wanted to take this whole section and give it to the students, I would start by distributing a new section. So if I click distribute new section, it will start by asking me, what do I want to call it? And I will call it land form project. Right. And if I wanted to specify exactly where I wanted to go. If I had, you know, different sections and things with uh, within the student's personal space, I could do that. But all I've got so far is just the student's name. So I just want this, this section to be made in their personal space. So I click create. It will think about it for a minute. Luckily, it won't take very long for me because I've only got three students in this class. It might take a little bit longer if you had more students, if you obviously will have more students in your class than three, hopefully. Um, and so once it's done, I can use this green swoopy arrow here to go back out. And when I check any of my students' personal space, they now have a section called Landform Project as well. So now I want to put the content in there. So I go to my teacher only, my version of the Landform Project, and I've got all these pages here. If I click on the top one, and then hold down the shift button on my keyboard and click on the last page, which is presentation, it highlights every page in that section. I can now right click over there and I get these options. And the second from the bottom is called distribute page. If I hover over that, it asks me essentially where in the student's personal spaces I would like to distribute that page. And what I can do now is click that page, that section I just made called Landform Project. And what it will do is it will take all of those pages that I have, um, gives me a little warning that it might take a long time if there's a lot of um, pictures and stuff, that's fine. It'll take all those pages that I created in my teacher only section when I planned out this assignment all the different steps along the way and can be much more detailed than the one I just made. But any 
planning that I did in this section, it, in all those different pages, it will now distribute all of it to the students in their landform project section that I already distributed to them. So I can click my little swoopy green arrow again and check the student's personal spaces. And now in their personal space, they now have all those pages that I created in my teacher only section. And where this becomes really handy is when I'm doing any kind of either formative or summative assessment, because in my class notebook add on, I have this review student work button. And if I click that, it'll ask me essentially which section in the student's personal spaces do I want to review. So if I click landform project, it will open up a little bar on the side over here where it's going to allow me to very quickly and easily toggle between my different students in a particular page that they might be working on. So in all of their personal spaces in their landform um, project section, I've given them each all of these pages, a gathering research, gathering questions, or generating questions and outline a presentation and synthesizing information. If I want to see how the different students are doing at their generating questions, I just click on the little plus and it allows me to look at all the different students. When I click on their names, it takes me to that student's generating questions page. And if this student was working on it right now, I would be able to see live what they are adding in. And I could also add my own feedback by simply typing on the page. If I want to check the next student, I just click the next name and it goes to the next student and so on. So when I'm doing my assessment on this, I can, instead of going back and forth and in and out different students and different things, I can very quickly check all of my students on that one part of that assignment, see where they're at, see who's, you know, maybe falling behind and needs a little bit of support. Um, I can get very quick assessment on uh, progress and move on. And then when it comes to uh, assessing anything, um, any sort of summative assessment, I can get an entire list. I can sort them by their last name so that it is in the same order as my class lists. And I can just scroll down my list of students, check it out and um, add it to my mark sheet for future reference. Okay, so the review student work in conjunction with distribute page and distribute section, really, really handy tools that OneNote class notebook has for you to use. Okay, last but not least uh, on this video, I want to show you a bunch of handy things that you can do and uh, the students can do in OneNote that make it a pretty useful tool for both teachers and students. So I've just made a little collection here. I made a section called Handy Stuff and I've got a list here on the side of each page um, for the different things that I want to show you. So the first thing is the ability to make equations. There's always an issue when you're using technology and math of the ability to make equations look good in a digital format. Well, OneNote attempts to make that easier on you. Um, if you click on the insert tab at the top and by the way I am for all of these handy things I am in the desktop version of OneNote because some of them translate over into the and are available in the online version but not all of them and some of the functionality is limited on some of the other ones so I just like to when I'm creating things I make it in the desktop version and then the students can still see it all um, they just might not be able to create everything in the online version if they're on Chromebooks. So back to equations, if I click on the insert tab at the top, one of the things that I can insert is an equation. So if I click the down arrow here, I get a bunch of sort of, I guess, common ones that I can put in. And if I just click on them, uh, it will just add that equation in and all the subscript and superscript things that are hard to do um, are all done for me and I can move that around to wherever I want to. Okay, if I was making an, uh, a question for the students. But I can also, one thing that I found handy is if I click at the very bottom insert new equation, I get a whole lot of options here. First of all, 
I get all of these design tools over here. So if I wanted to install insert a fraction now, if you've ever tried to do a fraction in a regular like Word document or something like that, it's really difficult to get everything lined up. The numerator on top of the denominator with a line in between because it's not meant to work that way. But in OneNote, you can. If you click the down arrow, it asks you what type of fraction you want. So I can have space between um, uh, more of a diagonal fraction, a side-by-side, -side, or a really close-together fraction, or some common fractions here. These ones with the boxes on top mean I can actually enter the numbers in. So if I pick this one, I get this little fraction here. And if I click on the top, the numerator there, I can put a 3. And then if I click on the denominator, I can put a 4. And I've now got a fraction for 3 quarters. Um, and I can, it's a little small, so if I wanted to, I could make that bigger. And again, I can move that around in the plane anywhere that I want to. There's all kinds of uh, tools and buttons in here. Um, as far as symbols go, massive amount of mathematics symbols. These are the basic math symbols. Then I can get all the Greek letters. I can use letter-like symbols the different operators um, in math, common, then relational, um, all sorts of advanced ones, uh, things that I've never even seen before. Um, I can get arrows, there are um, scripts, and then geometry, there is some handy symbols in geometry, things like a right angle, your therefore symbol, um, a measured angle, a right triangle there's uh you know the symbol for perpendicular to or not parallel ratios uh, all kinds of handy symbols that um, are really hard to do using a traditional keyboard but OneNote has included these for you so pretty handy um uh you could play around with these for a long time and um figure out what it is you're looking for as far as equations go the other handy thing is rule lines. Um, you'll notice that the background in OneNote is always just a blank white canvas. Um, and if you wanted to put a little more structure to that, you could go up here to the view tab and click here on rule lines. And then I can add either standard uh, horizontal rules um with a red margin like a piece of lined binder paper or i can add which is again handy in math uh grid lines so i can pick a, a size of grid line and add it in if i don't like that i can change it to a smaller grid or a larger grid and the handy thing with that is not only does it give the page a little bit of structure but if you were using this in conjunction with the draw tool to do or if the students were to use it in some sort of a math class, then you can do things like draw shapes and it will snap the shape to the grid lines. Now I've got that on an awfully large uh, marker type. I was playing around with the pen properties. I guess if you want to change the pen properties, you just click on the shape, click on pen properties, and then you can change it to whatever size or thickness you want and whatever color you want the pen to be and then when you're making your shapes it like i said it will snap it to grid lines when you are dragging the shape by just clicking and dragging it keeps it within those grid lines and make sure that it stays the same size um, even if i were to click on draw with touch and then try to draw a line or a shape I could do that by simply using my finger um, to add shapes um, or uh, write in things onto these grid lines as well so grid lines rule lines fairly handy as well the ink to math and ink to text speaking of drawing with our finger very cool uh, tool as well um, if I have a blank canvas like I have here and then I want to 
you know, make a quick note. And if, let's say a student is not a great typer, or if you are doing your observational records and you're just recording things, you can um, click on the draw with touch button up here. And once that's enab enabled, I can write with my finger. Now I have notoriously terrible handwriting, but now over here, if I once I've written that with my finger, there's this ink to text button. If I click that, it changes my chicken scratch handwriting to some nice text. So I could write quite a bit of notes and information with my finger or with a stylus, and then click that ink to text and it turns it into nice legible text, uh, which is handy for both teachers and students. And then along with that is the ink to math, which when I click, it brings me up this yellow pad here where I can write with my finger the mathematic equations. And it tries to figure it out. Now it says I put a two there, it thinks that it's some sort of an A. So I can click down here on this select and correct, and then I draw a lasso around it. And then when it does that, it comes up with a bunch of different options. So I see that the number two is there. I click that, it changes it to the number two. I can then insert that into the page. Okay, and on a little side note, may or may not want to tell your students this, but OneNote actually will act as a calculator. If you type things like 467 times 1,345 equals, when I hit the space bar, it will do that calculation for me. So, like I said, may or may not want to tell your students that, but it's another handy math tool um, that's available in a OneNote class notebook. Um, moving along, inserting audio and video. This is handy for both students and teachers. Um, if you have instructions that you want to give, but you do not want to have to uh, type them all out, you could go to the insert tab here and click record audio. It will make a recording, an audio recording, and paste it onto that page so that the students can just click on it and hear your instructions in your own voice. Same thing for video. Online version of OneNote only has audio, does not have the video option, but the desktop version has both. So as a teacher communicating information to the students, you could record video or audio and it would automatically be inserted into the page that you are viewing at the place wherever your cursor is. For students, it's also very handy as a way for them to demonstrate their knowledge. You could have them um, explain their thinking using an audio file, or I've had groups do uh, math projects on uh, with manipulatives um, and then record a video, have one person sort of angle the, the webcam on the, 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 the laptop and record a video of how they came up with their final answer using manipulatives and then that gets submitted and it's stored not only for them but for you as well as the uh, being the classroom teacher um, and lastly just because they're fun the ability to add stickers so again in the insert tab here there is this button called stickers if you click that you get the sticker sidebar that will load and there are all kinds of stickers that you can add to student work. So there are standard things like check marks and X's and stars and arrows and things like that. And to add them to any page, you just click and drag and drop them in. In theory. Oh, sorry, double click. and it adds them in. Some of them you'll notice, some of them are just look the way they are. Um, you might have to scroll to see them all because they show up in a big line here. Um, but also others uh, have these little pens beside them. When they have the little pens beside them, it means they are editable. 
So these ones with the fruit salad, um, where it says great job, if I put that in, it first gives me the opportunity to change what it says. And so I can change the font to whatever I want the pair to say. And then when I insert the sticker, uh, it will say my message instead of the great job. So if I had some specific feedback that I wanted to use, I could have a pair say it instead of me. Um, like I said, sort of just fun. Some of these ones in here are pretty funny. Students get a kick out of uh, you giving feedback on their essays with a, a fainting woman or an angrily staring man. Um, it's a fun way of giving feedback back to the students because um, everybody loves stickers. So those are the handy things that uh, go with OneNote. Uh, there's so much more that you could do with OneNote, but my best advice to you is to play around with it um, and get to you get to know it and you will learn to love it. The students take to it really quickly and student the teachers that have have figured it out and have spent the time sort of playing with it and, and immersing themselves in it have really um, embraced it uh, as I have. Okay, I hope this video has helped you and I hope to hear that uh, more teachers are using OneNote class notebook in their classrooms. Okay, enjoy folks.